This sermon will surprise many of you, I think. Most of you reading this or hearing this will were probably baptized, meaning immersed, of course, as Matthew twenty eight nineteen says, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But is that the way it should be? Is the wording in Matthew 28 the original wording of the original Greek text? Is that wording the one that, this is a question I think is really important, is the wording that's in Matthew 28, 19, was that what the apostles and early believers from that time onward did and said every time they baptized? Or did they do and say something very different? I'm sure they would not have disobeyed Jesus' own words. Anyway, so if they did something different, why would they baptize into the name that they did? So the title is, Into Whom Are We Baptized? This is Philip Shields, your brother in Christ and host of Light on the Rock. Let's see what the apostles were told to do and and say at water baptisms, which means immersion, not sprinkling. And I think you'll be very surprised. Part of the problem is that we don't have a single original copy. Forget the word copy. We don't have a single original of any of the New Testament books. We have copies, some very old copies, but no, no originals, just very good copies, though. Sometimes, especially when being translated into English and other languages, some liberties were taken. The King James, for example, used the word Easter in Acts 12, verse 4, instead of the word for Passover, as the original Greek had it. So what were the disciples and apostles told to do and say whenever they would baptize? Be turning to Matthew 28, 19. First, we have the command that is part of what many call the Great Commission. This is what we find recorded in Matthew 28, verse 19. The one speaking is Jesus, Yeshua. He's the one speaking. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name or in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, or as the King James puts it, of the Holy Ghost. But God's Spirit is His Spirit. It's not a ghost. It's a different word, actually, when they thought they'd seen a ghost when Jesus was walking on the water. But I'll bet just about all of you who are baptized were baptized using this formula, these set of, set of words. Recently, Pentecost 2022, I baptized a young woman in Florida, along with her family there in France, uh, who were watching. I thought you might be interested in what we did and how we did it. And how that relates to the sermon, we did not baptize her into any organization of man. We did not baptize her to become a member of a corporate church. And I hope you weren't either. (laughs) Okay, her father helped me with the baptism part of it. And maybe 20, maybe more, others showed up to joyously witness her confession and her baptism, which we did in a very um, wonderful place, a beautiful flowing creek. Some others were there and already there, playing in the water and so on. We just asked them politely if they could, they'd mind uh, letting us use the area, a small part of the area, for just four or five minutes. And then they were agreeable and and very interested in what we were doing. So we asked for a general blessing first on the deck at the side of the water, on the side of the river, before the proceedings began. And then we climbed down a little ladder into the water. And I said to the young woman, Uh, Let's call her name Linda. That is not her name, okay? But I said, Linda, have you repented of your sins, which is the breaking of God's commandments? And she said, yes, I have. As we're told in Romans 10, do you, Linda, openly confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, is your Lord and Savior? Do you believe in your heart that he died for you, for your sins, and that God our Father resurrected him from the dead? And that now Yeshua works as your advocate and will live inside of you by his spirit. And she said, yes, yes, I do. So I said to her, because you've repented of your sins and have accepted Yeshua, Jesus, as your king, savior, Lord and master for the forgiveness of your sins, we now immerse you into the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, for the washing away of your sins by his blood, by the authority of God, the father and through the Holy Spirit. We're not being baptized into any denomination. You are not, I said, being baptized into any denomination of man, but into the very body of Christ by the name 
of Jesus, Yeshua. You now will be immersed and buried into Christ and raised into his new life, like it says in Romans 6 to us. Then her father and I uh, baptized her into the running waters, immersed her, uh, having her dad help in the baptism, I think made it extra special. Her grandfather, who had died just a week or so or a couple of weeks before all this, whom she loved very deeply, her grandfather had also been baptized on Pentecost. So it was very special for her to also be baptized, like Grandpa was, on Pentecost. I then welcomed her with a big, wet, soggy hug in the waters as my newest sister. I said, Sister, welcome to the family of God as my sister and everyone here is sister. Then I did the laying on of hands. I asked for God our Father to send his indwelling of the Holy Spirit to come upon her and into her. That's what we did. Mostly I baptized her though into the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah. Was that the right thing to do? Or should I baptize her into the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? The historian Eusebius, who lived at the end of the 3rd century, beginning of the 4th century, 260 to 339 thereabouts, he says that the original wording in the original Greek of Matthew 28, 19 was quite a bit different from what we read today. He says all the original manuscripts and very old manuscripts that he had access to, and he did have a lot of access to manuscripts that don't even exist today, he says Jesus' original words were, as it was originally said, baptizing them into my name, is what he said for them to do. Make disciples of all nations, nations baptizing them into my name. It's the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah. So how would we know what is the truth on this? Well, one thing is to see what historical records we can find, like I just told you one by Eusebius, a historian. But what did the early believers say and do? What did Paul do? What did the 12 apostles and Peter and Philip and others uh, do when baptizing? When Philip, the deacon who went up to Samaria, what did he do? And what did the church in Jerusalem do? Did they repeat the present-day wording we have in Matthew 28, 19? Did they baptize into the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit? Or did they do what I did and baptize them into the name of Jesus? Full stop. Into the name of Yeshua. Yeshua, as you know, is a Hebrew word for Jesus. Okay, so you know that Yeshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus. I'll show you this. That let's examine every single instance of baptism. Every single instance of baptism being recorded after this. And um, to see if uh, they were baptized. And, and what did they say when, when they were baptizing? I'll show you every single instance. What they did, what they said as they baptized. If the traditional verbiage of Matthew 28:19 was being followed, which is the triune God formula, if that was correct, then surely the apostles would have obeyed Jesus' own words. Are you ready to be surprised? Let's start reading some scriptures as to what they actually did at baptisms. Acts 2:38. This was on the day of Pentecost. At the very end of his sermon, the people wanted to know what they could do. They wanted to know what they could do. And so... Um, Peter said to them, Acts 2.38, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So as I said to uh, the lady I was baptizing, um, we now immerse you for the remission of your, your sins, for the washing away of your sins. In Acts 8, verse 12, Philip when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. By the way, it doesn't say children there, does it? It doesn't say babies there. It says men and women were baptized. I have a blog that I wrote. Uh, should, you know, should children and infants be baptized? 
so, so you might want to read that if you haven't. Uh, you know, the Catholic Church sprinkles people with water uh, as, as a baby. But please read my blog on that if you have any question on it. Now, in Acts 8, verse 14, I'm going to emphasize verse 16. When the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they noticed that, that Philip baptized them, but he hadn't laid hands on them. He wasn't an ordained minister. He was, he was, uh, he was a deacon. And uh, so anyway, now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, <clears throat> who when they'd come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They'd only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to really notice that. Baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Does not say baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Are you seeing a trend here so far? Then we come to the story of the calling and conversion of Cornelius. He was a, a Gentile Roman centurion, an officer, and his family were all baptized this day. You can read the whole story in Acts 10. They were at the end of the story uh, where it's at the end of the story where we pick up about the baptism. Acts 10, verses 46 to 48. And then Peter answered, the end of 46, Can anyone forbid water that these should not be... Uh, baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. This was an exception to the general rule that you're baptized, have hands laid on you, then you receive the Holy Spirit. Here God was making a point that I am calling Gentiles now to be part of the body of Christ. And to make it obvious, he sent the Holy Spirit first, and they were speaking in languages and tongues uh, at that point. And so that's when Peter said, hey, can we... Is there any way we can uh, get these guys baptized? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Here we have it again, in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. So you're seeing every single time it, they were doing what I believe were the original words when Jesus or Yeshua said, uh, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into my name. That's historically what the earliest people describing what Matthew 28 and 19 said. That's what they said it said. Acts 19, verses 1 to 7, as it happened, while Apollos was at Corinth. Okay, Paul had been in Corinth, now he's leaving Corinth. Apollos is now in there. That Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. This is now on the west coast, or near the west coast of Turkey today. What's it called to him? I'm trying to think. Kusalasi, or that's not quite right. Uh, I can't think of the name. And finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you received, uh, believed? And they said to him, we haven't so much as heard whether there's a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then? Into what then were you baptized? So he said, into John's baptism. Paul said, I'm in Acts 19, verse 4. Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Christ, remember, means anointed. Messiah means anointed, anointed one, okay? Mashiach in Hebrew. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts 19, verse 5. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them and the Holy Spirit came upon them, they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 all in all. Okay? Are you seeing a trend here? Baptized in the name of the Lord, just like I believe were the original words Jesus made, baptizing them in, into my name or in my name. Romans 6, verses 3 to 6 is a really good section about Immersion, baptism. Romans 6, verse 3. Do you not know that as many of us who were baptized into Christ, into Christ, Jesus, were baptized into his death. So when we baptize someone, we're putting them under the water. A picture of being buried. Watery grave. 
and then we raise them back up. We don't leave them under the water. We raise them back up. That's picturing the resurrection of Yeshua, as it goes on to say. We're raised into his life, okay? And we have to believe that he died as I asked the one I was baptizing. I just don't know if they all people always want their name in here, so I'm, I'm not mentioning her name. I'd love to mention her name. But anyway, um, it's a wonderful baptism. And then uh, Galatians 3, verses 26 and 27. For you're all sons or children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. I can't find any other places where it talks about baptism and what was said, what they're baptized into, except the ones I've just read to you. So I think it's clear the apostles understood Yeshua's commands to be to baptize new believers into his name. So the early historians say the correct verbiage given by Jesus was this, baptizing them, go to all the world, to all nations, okay, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into my name. That's a short and simple answer. Baptizing them into my name. That's what we find the apostles doing every single time, no exception. There's no record of anyone in the Bible being baptized into the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. There just isn't. So did the apostles and everybody just disobey Jesus? By just baptizing them into the name of Jesus? Or were they obedient to Jesus? I think they were obedient. So we're baptized into Christ, into Jesus. Why? Because God Most High calls you and then he turns you over to Yeshua to work with. And he remember, you're being called, to hopefully, to be the bride of Christ. And back in the day, that's the father. Uh, the fathers decided who the children were, were going to marry. And so uh, God the Father seems to sanction that because that's what he does. He, he calls the ones who will be the bride of Christ. So anyway, he gives us to Yeshua, to Jesus, to work with. And then he reveals the Father, and who in turn reveals the Father to us. I've talked about all of that many times before. I've given verses and all that. Maybe I'll stick some of the notes as to the verses on those. Anyway, so we're baptized into the name of Jesus Christ because at baptism we're being immersed into his death and then his resurrection. And that's why when I baptized this lady, I asked her, do you believe that, that uh, uh, Jesus Christ died for you and that God the Father resurrected him from the dead and he now lives and reigns at the right hand of God, that he sits at the right hand of God? She said, yes. The Holy Spirit then immerses us after that with the laying on of hands into the body of Christ, not multiple churches or denominations. 1 Corinthians 12.13. 1 Corinthians 12.13. For by one Spirit we were all immersed into one body. By one spirit, we, will all, we were all baptized into one body. We know who that one body is, right? Whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, or, uh, and all have been made to drink of that one spirit. And we're told what the body is in Romans 12, actually Colossians 1, 15 to 18 is a good one too, the, the body, the church, and all that. Romans 12, verses 4 to 5, for as many as, for, as we have many members... We have many parts of our body, is what he's saying, but all the members don't have the same function. My hands do something different than what my ears do. So I, I do have uh, my feet do something different than my nose. So don't call my feet smelly feet or runny nose and all. <laughs> so we being many are one body in Christ. But boy, we look at the churches of God today in we're hardly acting like one body. Some of you churches are demanding that your brethren, your, your members, can't even listen to sermons from other people. You're forbidding it. Shame on you. We are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. God doesn't have a body with an arm in the other room and a leg over here and, and my head outside and my got a leg on, on the back lawn. No, we're one body, stuck together, working together. Not all separate like it is today. That's so wrong. 
We're going to have to find a way to get together, folks. We'll talk about that later. I'm talking about this into what were you baptized. So it's because of now being in Christ that we should learn that phrase well, in Christ, in him. And we have all, all the privileges and rights that Jesus has now are also ours. We're in his body. We're part of his body. Just like if I stuck a, a, a splinter into your finger, or better yet, if I grafted a finger onto you, you know, uh, that's now part of your body. And wherever you go, wherever you go, that splinter I stuck in you or whatever goes with you. So if we're, we're, the splinter is a bad example. We're, we're the body, we're parts of his body. We're the arms, legs, feet, and so on. In him we have redemption through the blood, an inheritance as co-heirs with Christ, Ephesians 1, 7 and 11 say, we become the very righteousness of God in him, in Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 21, another favorite verse of mine. For um, he made him who uh, to be sin, who had no sin for us, that we might be the righteousness of God in Christ, in him. What a swap. He takes all of our unrighteousness and we receive all of his righteousness. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that fantastic? I hope you all realize it is. We're also raised to the heavenlies with Christ. Right now, Ephesians 2, verses 4 to 6, in that he is up there sitting beside the Father. I'm sure he gets busy, does other things too. But my point is, in a sense, we're also there right beside the Father as well. That's what Ephesians 2, verses 4 to 6 says, uh, say, if you, if you will take the time to read it. Ephesians 2, verses 4 to 6. You should take the time to read those verses, really, to understand better what a glorious thing it is to be in the body of Christ, in Christ. It doesn't just mean in the church, okay? It means that too. But it means literally in the part of the very body that Jesus Christ is. So we're baptized into the name of Jesus Christ, or Yeshua. And now once we're... By the way, let me explain something else too. The Church of God people like me saying Jesus, or Jesus Christ... The Hebrew roots of Messianics like me saying Yeshua. And a lot of you are listening to this from Hebrew roots, Messianic, and so on. Um, and a lot of you are listening to it from Church of God. And a lot of you aren't part of either. So anyway, so I'm, I'm just saying it so that both can hear Jesus Christ or they can hear Yeshua HaMashiach. It's fine. That's what it is. Okay, please, please understand that. Now, once we're in Christ, or Messiah, that also puts us into the Father. As Colossians 3.3 3 says, another favorite of mine, my life is now hidden, hidden in Christ. My old life, my new life, everything is hidden in Christ. He now is my covering. He now is my life. So it says we, our lives now are hidden in Christ, in God. Christ now, verse 4, becomes my life and your life. Because of that, when he appears, will appear with him in glory. So yes, I want to be baptized into Christ. Absolutely. So based on what the apostles did and said at baptisms, I've come to believe that Matthew 28, 19 is one of those doctored scriptures to try to help prove the Trinity or the triune God. And based on what the apostles did... And based on history, which I'll say a little more about in just a minute here, I believe we were told by Jesus to baptize in his name. Going forward, that's what I'm going to do. And yet I am very sure many, many of you were baptized, as I was, into the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Now, historically, even historian Eusebius, who wrote at the end of the 200s and early 300s, and other believers in Christ in the first three centuries after that, they all state that Matthew 28, 19, about baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, originally was baptize them, baptizing them into my name. Nowhere else other than Matthew 28, 19 are we commanded to ever baptize into the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the example was always into Christ Jesus. Now, if you study into this more, you'll find out that many scholars through the years have doubted the accuracy of the present quotation we have in Matthew 28, 19, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, including Encyclopedia Britannica, 1987 edition, 
I'll put all the notes in my notes on that. Uh, ditto for the Interpreter's Dictionary of the Bible, 1980 edition. They all question it as well. They, it just something's not sounding right, smacking right there. The original manuscripts are simply gone. I can't show you what Matthew wrote. It's just gone. It's either lost or destroyed. Every manuscript we have, the oldest ones, are from around the year 400 A.D., and all existing manuscripts we have, including the oldest ones, now do have that traditional in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit verbiage, wording. That's what you find in all of the oldest manuscripts. I'm just being upfront and honest with you. But I personally feel that the best confidence we can have of what Yeshua actually originally said, and what was originally written, is what the apostles apparently all did. Are you following me? That's what, this is what they practiced baptizing them into the name of Jesus or in the name of Jesus. Every single time they baptized. That's what the record is telling us. Now, I'm sure there can be some ministers who are going to say, well, the oldest records say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so that's what we go by. Um, I, think, I think knowing that the Bible itself has been doctored sometimes, like adding the word Easter instead of, instead of Passover, and adding First John, I think it's 5, 7, which was a whole verse trying to prove the Trinity again, which was not in the original. Everyone acknowledges that now. So I just think that and what the disciples did uh, tells me that they were baptized into the name of Christ. Again, the noted Greek historian and scholar Eusebius, writing between 270 and 340, okay, had much better access to much older man manuscripts than we have, and he used to work out uh, of the greatest Christian library at the time. And every single time Eusebius quoted Matthew 28, 19, and 20 in his writings, he always wrote it this way, go and make disciples of all nations in my name, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And I give the uh, sources of that in the, my notes here. If you want to go back and try to find those sources and read it for yourself. Eusebius the historian was unfamiliar with any other way of saying Matthew 28, 19. Until, until in 325, remember he died at 340. But in 325 he went to Constantinople, uh, the Emperor Constantine had invoked and convened a council, Council of Nicaea, and the uh, convened by Emperor Constantine, he wanted to bring out, uh, he wanted to bring Christianity, all saying and believing and teaching the same thing, and he wanted to also promote the Trinity. And everyone tried to understand it as best they could and teach it and believe it. It was only after that that we find Eusebius, now very old, he was younger than I was though, than I am, <laughs> using the more common reading that we have today. To me, that tells me that he got persuaded to change his understanding of what was the original words of Jesus, what were the original words. Constantine wanted to emphasize the Trinity, and Constantine killed many of his own family members. He was not against killing anybody who didn't want to go along with what the Council of Nicaea. So I personally believe Eusebius, in his late life, started using the formula, the words that we now see, I believe that he was persuaded to change, uh, knowing that that was not what the original oldest manuscripts actually said. I, I, I think that's what happened to him. Justin, we know him as Justin Martyr. He was an early church teacher, a well-known writer, defender of the faith, an apologist in that sense. And he wrote sometime between 130 and 140 A.D., he died in 165, so this goes way back, just some years after um, John would have died, and Polycarp and Polycrates and others, the disciples of John. Um, anyway, he was writing 130 to 140, as, and then he died as a martyr, I believe, in 165 A.D. So now he's known as Justin Martyr. His name is Justin. He spoke of, quote, some still, even today, now this was in his book called, um, which one's this, the, Di the Dialogue with Trifo. He's trying to talk with a Jew, I believe, here, and convince him of who Jesus Christ was. 
Some still, even today, it says, are being made disciples in the name of his Christ and are abandoning the path of error who also do receive gifts, each as they may be worthy, being illumined by the name of this Christ. That's from Dialogue with Trifo, 39, page 258. So they, the, historically, they all say the wording was in Jesus' name, in my name. Uh, this seems to tell me that Justin was not familiar with the current wording we now have at Matthew 28, 19. He knew Matthew 28, 19 in his day to baptize them, quote, in my name. So, yes, others may believe that we should say the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. To me, the evidence I have seen is that Jesus, Yeshua, said, baptize them in my name, into my name. And that's what the apostles all did. To me, that's the greatest proof of all, not even historically, but what the apostles did. Otherwise, time after time after time that they were baptizing people by the thousands, they were disobeying him. But they never disobeyed Jesus on that, on that line. They did exactly what he said. That's my opinion. There's great power in the name of Jesus, Yeshua. When we invoke his name upon a person being baptized, there's great power being released. And what an honor it is to come under and into his name. That's why when you pray and you say in Jesus' name, at the end of your prayer, it's like it's a prayer that you're offering to God the Father as if, as if it came from Jesus himself. <clears throat> from Jesus himself. Going forward, any baptism I do will always be from now on. I now baptize you into the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Lord and Savior. Amen. Be sure to comment on this. I do read comments. and They do encourage me. They do make me think. If you have questions, put them in the comments. and We'll be glad to talk with you. Thank you for coming to our website. Let others know about it. And check out the videos, the audios, and the blogs. God bless you. God be with you. Father in heaven, we come before you and we just thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you in Jesus' name for all that you are and all that you do. We can't wait to be meeting with you, talking with you face to face. We know that time's coming. We can't wait for the time to be married to Yeshua, to Jesus. <clears throat> we can't wait, Father. And will you bring us one together into one body? One body. And let your spirit just motivate all of the pastors and groups to give up the separation that they have going on right now. And may we all come together as one that you're pleased with. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren, for brothers, to dwell together in unity, as one of the Psalms says. We love you with all our heart. Help us love you more and seek you with all of our heart. In Yeshua's mighty name, may your power be released in us now, Yeshua. May you come and live in us. Change us. Convert us. Make us look more and more like you. You be the light that shines through us. You be the salt, giving flavor to all that we do and everyone we go to, to be around. <clears throat> we love you very much. We thank you for your love. And even those who are in prisons and jails and different things, who are seeking you, hear their prayers, O oh God, and work miracles in their lives too. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen. Amen.